Floppy diskettes are one of the most popular computer data storage mediums. They are inexpensive, reusable, easily stored, and interchangeable. In order for the floppy disk drives that read and write these diskettes to perform to industry standards, the service technician must align them from time to time. The purpose of this tape is to introduce you to the theory of operation of floppy drives and to acquaint you with the tools and procedures used in alignment. Before discussing the actual alignment procedures, let's look at the way a floppy drive stores and retrieves data. The computer's central processing unit produces data in bytes, 8 bits of binary data at the same time. The CPU sends this data to the FDC, or Floppy Disk Controller IC, which encodes it into a specifically timed train of serial pulses. The timing relationship of each pulse to the next indicates its logic level. The serial data now goes to the floppy drive logic board, which converts the digital pulses into switching analog current. This current drives two halves of a center-tapped read-write head. Each time current flows through one half of the head, which is nothing more than a coil, it generates a magnetic field. When the current reverses and flows through the other half of the head, the polarity of the field changes. The floppy diskette is coated with magnetic material which responds to the changing current by forming magnetic domains. These are areas where all of the magnetic elements are oriented in the same direction. The polarity of each domain is the opposite of the one on each side of it. Each new magnetic domain represents a pulse. Remember that the time between one pulse and the next determines the logic level that it represents. To read the diskette, the head passes over the magnetic domains and the process is reversed. The changing domains induce current spikes in the head coil and the drive logic board decodes the reversals into digital time encoded data. The FDC then converts the data into parallel binary information for the processor. Floppy disks are random access storage devices. This means that they can reach any piece of data on the disks without having to read in all of the data stored on the diskette before it. This requires that the data on the disk be laid out in a standard pattern or format. The diskette is divided into thin concentric lines called tracks. These are the lanes where data can be stored. Tracks are further divided into sectors. Each sector begins with a header that identifies it. The system can read the sector headers to find the proper block to use. A sector, therefore, is the smallest section of a diskette that can be read from or written to. The job of the drive mechanism is to move the head to the appropriate track to be read or written. The actual magnetic diskette is enclosed in a protective jacket. The media spins within this case, but the jacket itself does not rotate. The diskette rests on a hub attached to a spindle motor. The spindle motor rotates the hub, causing the entire perimeter of the diskette to move past the head many times per minute. A stepper motor moves the head across the radius of the diskette under the control of the FDC. The combination of these two motions allows any track to be positioned under the head. The floppy drive also produces signals that keep track of the position of the two motors. The index pulse provides reference for the spindle motor and the track zero signal indicates that the head is positioned over the outermost track. In a soft sectored environment, an index pulse indicates one revolution of the spindle motor. Each diskette has a single hole in its jacket and media near the center of the diskette. A phototransistor and sensor are placed on the drive chassis so that they produce a pulse when the index hole passes. The FDC uses this pulse to determine if a diskette is rotating in the drive. Some operations also use the index pulse for timing. A track zero signal tells the drive logic board when the head is positioned over the outermost track. This signal provides a reference for finding all other tracks on the diskette. By using these two signals along with information at the beginning of the sectors, the FDC can direct the floppy drive to read or write to any position on the diskette. Since there are so many mechanical parts involved in these operations, data written on different drives or on the same drive over a period of time may vary in amplitude and position. This variance leads to incompatibility between drives. A diskette written on one drive may be unreadable on another. Even the drive that wrote it may be unable to retrieve the data if enough mechanical change occurs. 
In order to prevent these problems, we must standardize the alignment of all floppy disk drives. We do this by adjusting certain drive components based on information provided by a drive exercise program, an alignment disk, and test equipment. Floppy drives must be aligned in several situations. These include during service on the computer and when a new floppy drive is installed. Of course, floppy drives must also be adjusted whenever the drive is failing or when the user cannot successfully exchange diskettes between drives. Tandy provides its service technicians with a computer program called Tandy Drive Controller, or TDC, that assists in aligning drives. TDC includes a drive exerciser, which causes the drive to perform operations needed to check and adjust it. TDC also describes the procedure for checking each alignment, including how to set up the test equipment, what test points to observe, and the readings one should expect. The test points vary for different drive types, so you must select the correct drive description for effective use of the program. There are several releases of TDC, including TRIS-DOS-based versions for 8-inch and 5-inch drives, an MS-DOS version, and a 3.5-inch version. The menus in each one are different, but the procedures covered are very similar. TDC is designed for use with a special industry standard alignment diskette. This diskette contains patterns written on a very precise, closely calibrated jig. By adjusting a drive to match the standard set by the alignment diskette, we assure proper operation and media interchangeability with other drives. There are several versions of alignment disks available. Always use an alignment disk with the same number of tracks and the same data density specified for that drive. Double-sided alignment diskettes, which have two index holes, can be used on either single or double-sided drives. Each alignment diskette contains several types of data patterns. On track zero, there is a continuous band of data all around the disk. Track one has a burst of data written exactly 200 microseconds after the index indication. Near the middle of the disk is an oval track spanning three normal track widths. There are several groups of four data bursts written on an inner track. The first burst in each group is written with the head at an extreme angle across the track, and the second with the head at a less acute angle. The third and fourth bursts are a mirror image of the first two. These unique patterns will be used to check and correct various alignments. Due to the unusual nature of the data on an alignment diskette, it cannot be reproduced on a regular drive. To prevent accidental damage of this expensive test tool, observe the following precautions. Do not bulk erase an alignment diskette. Do not place near magnets of any kind, including speakers, telephones, and magnetized tools. Do not defeat the right protect option on an alignment diskette. Do not turn a computer on or off with the alignment diskette in the drive. For best performance, alignment diskettes should be stored in jackets at room temperature. The alignment patterns are similar for all drives, as are the methods of adjustment. Track zero adjustment consists of moving an indicator on the drive chassis so that it generates a signal just before the stepper actually reaches the outermost track. This signal is sometimes qualified by the stepper motor phase. In other drives, it is the sole indication that the drive is at track zero. The point at which it becomes active depends on which arrangement is used. The next alignment, head radial, compares head positioning on a drive to the industry standard. It interacts heavily with the track zero adjustment. To check head radial, TDC steps the drive out to track zero, then into a standard track near the center of the diskette. There, it reads the oval track on the alignment disk while the technician monitors the read amp output with an oscilloscope. A properly aligned drive will produce a cat's eye pattern with equally sized lobes on the scope. If the pattern is incorrect, the drive must be adjusted by moving the head in or out on the radius of the disc without changing the phase of the stepper motor. To do this, we lock the stepper motor on phase, loosen the head, and move it on its mount. On some drives, we move the head by rotating a cam, and on others by rotating the body of the stepper motor. If the pattern is not present at all, single step the head in and out several tracks. If you find the cat's eyes at another track position, 
readjust the track zero indicator and try again. The head azimuth check is designed to determine if the head is perpendicular to the track it is attempting to read. TDC sends the head to an inner track and reads a pattern consisting of two data bursts written almost on track and two that are angled sharply across it. The technician once again monitors the read amp outputs. If the head is oriented correctly, the two center data bursts, which are written more directly on the track, will show greater amplitude than the two outer ones. To adjust head azimuth, swivel the head until it is perpendicular with the track. On many drives, azimuth cannot be adjusted, but it must be checked. If a non-adjustable drive does not meet specifications, replace it. Unacceptable azimuth can cause media interchangeability problems, even when the drive passes all diagnostics. Head amplitude is the next function to check. A bulk erased blank diskette must be used for this test. If the diskette already has information on it, the technician cannot be sure if it was written by the drive being tested. The head amplitude option on TDC will step the head to an inner track, write a pattern around the disk, and then perform continuous reads. Monitor the read amp outputs and compare the level to that specified. If the amplitude is too low, clean the head and rotate or replace the head load pad if the drive has one. Bulk erase your test diskette and recheck the signal for level and compliance, which is the variation in level between the highest and lowest points. Too much variation in the signal can indicate dirty heads, worn head load pads, or defective diskettes. The drive's motor speed must also be checked and adjusted. Since the data on the disk is encoded in a time-dependent format, a change in motor speed can alter the interpretation of pulses. Notice the change in the pulses on the screen as we vary the speed of the motor. To check motor speed, measure the time between index pulses with a disk in the drive and the door closed. In some cases, this is done by software and a graph is displayed on the screen, and in some cases by reading the period of the index pulse train with a frequency counter. In either instance, motor speed is aligned by adjusting a potentiometer that varies bias to the spindle motor. Motor speed is not adjustable on drives with AC spindle motors. Index timing is the next alignment to perform. This adjusts the timing of the pulse from the index sensor to match a standard set by the alignment diskette. The technician syncs on the index pulse and monitors the outputs of the read amps. At the same time, TDC steps the head to track one and reads a data burst that is recorded at a precise location on the alignment diskette. The index sensor or receptor is adjusted so that the time between the beginning of the scope trace and the data burst meets specifications. The final factor that we must consider is raw data jitter. This is the amount of noise that the drive's read amp is interpreting as data. To check data jitter, monitor the read data pulses on the drive logic board. We may adjust the jitter with or without a diskette inserted. In either case, we adjust the bias on the read amp for maximum data detection without excessive noise. We have now discussed the basic operation of a floppy drive and the alignments that we can perform on it. Stop the tape and review part one of your workbook. Now that we understand what a drive alignment is and why they must be done, we are ready to see how to adjust a floppy drive. Before attempting to align any drive, gather all of the materials that you will need. You will need the following diskettes, diagnostic, alignment, and blanks. Be sure that the blanks are bulk erased and that the alignment diskettes are at room temperature before you start. Also have available a meter, an oscilloscope, and a frequency counter, and at least three calibrated times 10 test probes. Your tools need to include non-magnetic Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, appropriate Allen wrenches, extender cables, and any other tools required to remove the drive from the computer. Before beginning the alignment, remove the floppy drive from the computer. Arrange it externally so that the chassis and the logic board are both accessible and reconnect it using extender cables. To illustrate these procedures, we will align a TIAC thin line 5 and a quarter inch disk drive 
found in the Tandy 1000. This drive is set up for alignment. It is set vertically so that the test probes can be connected and the chassis is easily reached for alignments. Both DC power and signal data are connected to the drives via extender cables. If the signal cable were connected backwards, the drive light would come on and the motor would run continuously. Now we will boot the MS-DOS version of TDC. The first option that we must select is drive type. If we do not pick the correct one, the test point specification values will be invalid. Next, we must select which drive to align. On MS-DOS computers, the first drive is called A and the second B. Once we choose A, we are ready to begin. The first test that we will perform is the carriage step test. This moves the head back and forth between the innermost and outermost tracks, allowing us to check for binding or failure of the stepper motor. This is also a good opportunity to check voltages supplied to the drive. Low input voltages can cause a variety of problems, including low head amplitude, bad motor speed, poor stepper motion, and logic failures on the drive board. Always perform the carriage step and voltage check first to point out problems that alignments can't correct. On this drive, head radial must be checked next. Select the radial azimuth option on your diagnostic and insert the alignment diskette. The screen will display the correct test points for the read amp outputs and the index pulse, which is used as a trigger. The proper scope settings are also shown. Be sure and follow the directions, AC coupling, channel B inverted, add mode, and external sync on the index pulse are critical to a correct display. If no cat's eye pattern appears, move on to the track zero adjustment. If your screen does display the correct pattern, observe the ratio of the two lobes. To find the ratio, divide the amplitude of the smaller lobe by that of the larger. Even if the pattern is within the 80% tolerance, gently move the motor across the track to center the head over the alignment test pattern. Even though the alignment patterns are very precisely written, there is some variation between diskettes. Use the same alignment diskette for all drives in a system to gain the best possible interchangeability. Remember, if one drive is 20% off in one direction and the other drive is 20% off in the other, there is almost half a track variation between the two. Inadequate alignment is the cause of most compatibility problems. Since this is a double-sided drive, we must next have TDC toggle to the other side of the drive and check radial there, too. Fine-tune the adjustment until both sides meet specifications. Sometimes this means that each side is slightly off-center in opposite directions. If both sides cannot meet the required tolerances, the drive must be replaced since the two sides cannot be aligned independently. Before moving to the next step, select the TDC options Step In Elastic and Step Out Elastic. This will move the head to the innermost and outermost tracks and back to the radial alignment track. Make sure that the alignment is still correct after the stepper has moved. Once head radial has been aligned, press enter to check the angle of the head on the track or head azimuth. The test points and most of the scope settings will remain the same, but TDC will prompt you to select a different time base. The drive will step to an inner track and read the azimuth pattern on the alignment disk. Since the TIAC is a double-sided drive, use the head select option to check the azimuth on both heads. If either side is incorrect, the drive must be replaced. Next, we must assure that the Track Zero sensor is activated at the proper place. Select the Track Zero option on TDC. The drive will step out until the sensor indicates Track Zero, then back into the position where the radial pattern should be. If the cat's eye pattern reappears, the sensor is positioned correctly. If not, select the Single Step option to move the head in or out until you find the cat's eyes. If they are on a lower track, move the track zero sensor towards the hub. If the pattern is on a higher track, move it out. Repeat this process until the cat's eyes appear on the proper track. The next step is to check the amplitude of the data produced by the heads. This requires a bulk erased blank diskette. When you select the head amplitude option, a pattern will be written on the disk and read back. The amplitude must meet or exceed the specification and be steady across the display. 
Cleaning the heads will often correct problems with low head amplitude. Use isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. Next, the motor speed must be checked. Select the motor speed option and insert a blank diskette. TDC will display a test point and settings for a frequency counter. The test point is the index signal and we will measure its period. Make sure to set your frequency counter to measure period in milliseconds and to trigger on the negative slope. Adjust the motor speed potentiometer, if there is one, for a 200 millisecond period, which indicates 300 RPM. On Z80-based machines, the software reads the index pulse and displays the motor speed on a graph. In this case, adjust the motor for 300 RPM. After motor speed, check the index timing, which compares the time at which the index sensor generates a pulse to an industry standard. Select the index timing option and insert the alignment diskette. TDC will display new scope settings. Be particularly aware of the trigger slope and time base for this test. We are measuring the time from the beginning of the index pulse to a data burst on the alignment diskette. To meet industry standards, this must be 200 microseconds. The tolerance for this alignment varies from drive to drive, but adjust it as closely as possible for the greatest compatibility. The final adjustment that we will check is the raw data jitter. Select the raw data option on the TDC menu and insert a freshly bulk erased blank diskette into the drive. TDC will describe new test points and scope settings, write an FF hex pattern to the disk, and read it back. Adjust the bias on the read amp for the steadiest center pulse. This indicates the fewest possible false triggerings of the read amp on noise. Some Z80 based machines use another adjustment procedure. On these units, the probe is still connected to the read data, but the scope is set for AC coupling. With no disk in the drive, bias the read amp for the lowest average voltage on the scope. This makes the read amp as sensitive as possible and does not reflect any mechanical noise or media characteristics. The alignments that we just performed are similar on all drives regardless of manufacturer, computer, or size. To see this, let's look at and align an 8-inch Shugart drive found on the Model 2. As we did with the TIAC drive, we will set the Shugart up externally for easy access and connect it using extender cables. Just like before, we select the drive type and which one to align. This time, the first drive is called 0, the second drive is 1, and so on. Our first check on the Shugart, like any other drive, will be carriage step. Once we have verified mechanical function, we will adjust the track 0 switch. Select the track 0 option on the TDC menu, and it will display a test point to read the switch output from. Use the single step option to move the head between track 1 and track 2. Adjust the switch so that it is open on track 2 and closed on track 1. Closing the switch at track 1 allows for mechanical bounce. The switch output is anded with stepper phase 0 to produce the track 0 signal. Once the switch is set properly, check the track 0 stop that prevents the stepper from moving the head past track 0. Step the head out to track zero. The stop must be very close to the head, but not touching it. On the SA800, the correct gap is 20 mils. Check the technical reference manual for the exact gap for each drive type. The next adjustment on the Shugart drive is head radial. This operation is identical to that shown before. A properly aligned drive will produce a cat's eye pattern on the oscilloscope. Head radial is once again adjusted by moving the head in or out without changing the stepper phase. To check head azimuth, press the enter key as you did on the TIAC. Since this is a single-sided drive, there is no need to toggle sides on the Shugart. Check head amplitude with a blank, bulk erase diskette. The procedure is identical to that described in the TIAC alignment, but pay special attention to compliance on single-sided drives. These drives have head load pads, small felt buttons that press the disc against the head. A worn head load pad can reduce head amplitude or cause unacceptable compliance. The head load pad usually needs to be changed when the heads are cleaned. The Shugart drive has a standard index timing alignment varied by moving the sensor. 
There is also a secondary adjustment which consists of varying the width of the pulse by varying the resistance of the receptor input. The motor speed check is like that of the five and a quarter inch drives in Z80 computers with two exceptions. First, since the eight inch drives rotate faster, the optimum speed is 360 RPM rather than 300. Secondly, since the Shugart, like most full height eight inch drives, has an AC spindle motor, the speed cannot be adjusted, but it must be checked. So far, you can see that the alignments are very similar. However, there is one alignment on the Shugart that has no counterpart on the TIAC. This adjustment is head load timing. It is found only on drives that use a solenoid and a head load arm to bring the diskette into contact with the head. To check head load timing, we will sync on the head load signal and measure the interval until read data reaches full amplitude. Select the head load timing option on TDC and insert the alignment diskette. The menu will show test points for read amp data and the head load signal for sync. Press the H and repeat keys to cause the head to load and unload repeatedly. Make sure that the time between the beginning of the scope trace and the point when the data reaches full amplitude is within specifications. To adjust head load timing, change the distance between the head load arm and the diskette. Recheck and repeat until the drive meets or exceeds specifications. After completing the alignments on any drive, test it thoroughly. It must pass the disk diagnostic test with retries disabled. It must also format properly. Next, format a disk on the drive you aligned and run disk diagnostics using that diskette on another drive. This helps to assure compatibility. Once the drive has passed all tests, reinstall it in the computer and run the tests again. Failures at this point can be caused by incorrect cabling, interference from monitors, power supplies, or bad test media. Whatever the cause, the error must be corrected and the drive pass all tests before you return it to the customer. After stepping through these two alignments, it is easy to see that all floppy alignments are essentially alike. The test point numbers will differ but the data that they provide remains the same. The physical adjustment procedures are similar for all drives, too. To adjust the radial, you may turn a cam or rotate a motor, but the result is the same, centering the head over a track. The same is true for each of the alignments covered on this tape. The knowledge that you acquired on this tape will assist you in bringing any floppy drive, regardless of type, to the peak of performance. You have now completed the Tandy floppy drive alignment training tape. More information on drives and their alignments can be found in the accompanying workbook and also in your technical bulletins, diagnostic manuals, and service manuals.